Hey, this is Keith with How to Build Your Own Home, and I want to talk about retaining walls today. Uh, we've got a large retaining wall right here, and you can see the footings that are extending into the property here, almost eight feet. Hey, Arvin. This is my concrete guy, Arvin. And uh, I bid out several different walls for this project. Uh, a regular diamond block, you know, regular stackable. Uh, but it was going to require too much of an angle, therefore cutting into his, my owner's property. And he's, he needs a drive right around here, around the house that we're going to build, and we we're going to lose some space. So he opted for a, a concrete pour. But what's, in, what's interesting, this is going to be a concrete retaining wall. And retaining walls are very interesting uh, because they can be very costly. Uh, but they can also solve for some problems in a very unique way with very limited space. If I had a big, huge stone stackable wall here, I'd have to suck up a lot of space in both the neighbor and my client's yard. And it uh, would eliminate them from having uh, an easement around the property here. So we opted for this. A couple things to note that as you are building a retaining wall and it's going to extend close to the road, a lot of times uh, you need to drop that retaining wall to about a two to three foot level. That way when people are exiting and entering their easements into their property, they can see over the wall and they can see oncoming traffic. Check your local city zoning for that. Uh, that's a big issue. I've seen a lot of people take a, a wall all the way to the street and they have to take it down because there's no line of sight. So keep that in mind when, as you get closer to the street, everything changes. <clears throat> also, you notice here we're pouring the concrete. Our rebar inspection passed on Friday, which means the city inspector comes out and looks at the rebar inside the wall and makes sure that it fits engineering. A note on engineering. When it comes to retaining walls, uh, they say that you don't need to retain or engineer anything over three feet or over four feet. It changes in various jurisdictions. But if you're going to retain anything, like I'm going to retain, or even expansive or, or collapsible soils, uh, just get it engineered. Uh, if you, you saw the engineering on this, it's pretty intense because we're holding back a lot of weight. On the other side of the street, other side of the neighbor here, there's just a massive nine foot drop off. So this wall has to hold back an enormous amount of pressure against it, which again explains the uh, six foot footing down there that's expanding this way. Th keep, th keep in mind it's like an L, a retaining wall. The bottom part of your footing, if that's got weight on it, as it tries to move forward, it can't bend over there because this footing is holding it in place. That's why you have an extended footing on the side that's being retained so that it holds that wall down. And the rebar inside there is pretty intense. Uh, we got a lot of rebar in there. One thing to inspect, I came out on Friday and the rebar was touching the, the form. Now you've got to be at least two inches away from the form in order to make sure that rebar stays away from the outside edge. If you've driven around city projects or any other project and you see bridges uh, <clears throat> weathering away and the rebar is showing, that's more than likely because the rebar was not put deep enough into the concrete. So I made Arvin come out and make sure the rebar is at least two inches away from the form. Even though it passed inspection, over time it would eventually get in there and rust. Uh, <clears throat> Anyway, I love seeing concrete pour. Now, anyway, just a couple of thoughts on retaining walls. Uh, make sure they get them retained and, and properly engineered. And uh, wait for them to cure before you even do any um, compression behind that wall. Anyway, this is Keith with How to Build Your Own Home.